morning. Today we're going to go over our um, language review. Uh, it'll say week five, Monday at the top. Uh, the first box, the top left-hand corner, is about titles. It says underline the titles. You always underline titles. Sometimes you'll find them italicized when you're writing a text, but here we're going to underline them. So Ryan and Caleb read The Last Olympian by Rick Gordon. The Last Olympian is the title. Rick Gordon is our author. does not need to be capitalized. And Ryan and Caleb are our subject in the sentence. They're the ones that are reading the book. Number two, the oldest newspaper in Texas is the Daily News, published in Galveston. The Daily News is the title of that newspaper. You'll also notice that the words in the title are all capitalized. The Last Olympian, The Daily News. Moving over, so we're talking about the present perfect tense. So, I blanked that movie many times. I will seen, may seen, have seen, had seen. Perfect tense is either have, had, or will have before a verb. So in this sentence, the only ones that have the word have are C and D. It's not A or B. Have is present tense. Had is past tense. So if we're doing the present perfect, the answer would be C. I have seen that movie many times. Number two, the Jones family blank to many countries, will travel, has traveled, A and C don't have has, had, or have. So the Jones family has traveled to many countries is the present perfect tense. So it's not B, it is D, present perfect. In our sentence that we're correcting, Though Mr. Thompson were very wealthy, he was still very unhappy. The word though is not a sentence. It needs to be although or though spelled correctly. I want to put although because that's the correct beginning word. Although is spelled A-L-T-H-O-U-G-H. -H. It's capitalized, beginning of a sentence. Mr. needs to be capitalized. It's a title. Thompson needs to be capitalized. It's his last name, a proper noun. Although Mr. Thompson were, were is a plural linking verb, we need the singular, was, very. The word wealthy is spelled incorrectly. There needs to be an A in it, W-E-A-L-T-H-Y. Though Mr. Thompson was very wealthy, we need a comma, because we have a compound sentence, we're separating the two thoughts. He was still very unhappy. He was, still has two L's, very Unhappy is a statement, so it ends with a period. Next, we have just regular past tense. Now, usually when you do past tense, you add ed to the end. If the word ends in a y, you might change the, change the y to an i and add ed. But there are some words in the English language that you are going to change the word completely. It's going to be a whole new word. There's no real rhyme or reason or rule to it, but it's sight words you must remember. So, Jesse singed is not correct. There is no word singed. It is sang. Jesse sang a beautiful song. And then the author weaved is not a word. The word we should use is wove. The author wove a tangled plot in the story. Insert commas to show a direct address. So when someone might be directly talking to a character or a person, they refer to them by name. After that name, there's usually a pause in the speech. You're adding a comma after it because of that pause. So, Nick, will you help Eva wash the dinner dishes? They're talking to Nick. They're addressing him directly. So, Nick, comma, will you help Eva wash the dinner dishes? The next sentence says, boys and girls, please take out your books. I probably said that a couple of times to you. I'm addressing the boys and the girls in class. So, a comma goes after boys and girls. And there's the end of the day bell. And last, slide, uh, last box, use cause and effect context clues to choose the best meaning of the underlined word. Jordan's mother was pragmatic. We don't know what that means. She knew that if Jordan had the new Xbox One in his bedroom, he would stay up late each night. Well, cause and effect. He's going to have the new Xbox in his bedroom. He's going to stay up at, at, late at night. If she knows that, which of these words is she? Dreamy? Well, dreamy usually either means that you're dreaming or that you're kind of attractive. That doesn't really fit. Practical means you're smart and you understand things. That might work. Unrealistic? Well, that seems realistic. If you had an Xbox in your room, you'd probably want to play it a lot, too. 
uh, probably does not work at all in this one. And then harsh means that she's maybe doing something kind of mean or in a mean way. She isn't doing anything in this sentence. She's just making a connection. So really what she is is practical. And there's our morning work for today.